Um, Tarnished the news of possible large job losses in Clovidian in the Midlands and Athlone over the next two years is a devastating blow to the people of that area, particularly to the workers and their families. And I'd like to say that my heart goes out to the workers who are now left with this great uncertainty in their lives. And of course, added to that, there is the threat of closure of the barracks in Mullingar, something that you promised wouldn't happen. When this government came to power, they promised a significant jobs budget, and all we got was a damn squib of a, a jobs initiative. And what we see month by month with this government is an increase in the live register, despite net outward migration. It's gone up since she came in. Question, please. Can I? Please, Deputy Deputy, 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 Deputy. Without interruption. Without interruption. Yes, Deputy. Question, please. I'll, I'll wait. I'll please. Deputy O'Keefe. I just wait for the interruption. Please. They're going to let the lead. Order, order, please, order. Eamon, Deputy O'Keefe. Can I show you, Deputy, that there's nothing compared to the neck of this government, who, who, who's tuned in opposition. Few turns, few turns. Who's tuned in Deputy O'Keefe. Deputy Buttenberg, Deputy. Deputy O'Keefe. Can I order please? Deputy O'Keefe. No. Deputy O'Keefe. Can I ask the Tarnish to have the IDA and the government government been reformed of the exact number of jobs that are at risk? Can I ask you what steps have been taken by the Minister? responsible and the IDA to save these jobs? Can I ask you what proposals the government have to provide alternative employment to people across the Midlands and the West affected by this decision? Can I ask you what plans are there to work with the workers and managers of the company to organise training and reskilling of workers? Whether the IDA will be seeking a clawback of grants paid to this company? And can I also be assured by your tarnish that, that there is no threat to jobs in another section of this company that are located in Blanchardstown? Thank you, Deputy. Can I also ask the tarnish that, whether it is intended to use the underspend of 10 million euro at the end of August in the spend under the TUS programme, which is an employment programme, to try to provide more jobs and more opportunities for unemployed people? Well, Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, I want to express my, my own concern about the uh, announcement uh, that has been made in respect of Covidian uh, in Athlone, which has been operating there for uh, 30 years. I understand that it is undertaking a transformation of its operations and that as part of this, one of its basic products uh, will transfer over the next two years to Thailand and that the company intend to offer a voluntary redundancy programme. It is too early for the company to state how many jobs will be impacted, as they are also looking at bringing in new products and technologies to the site uh, that will affect the, the final number. Uh, the deputy has uh, asked about the, in a wider sense, about the government's um, uh, employment uh, strategy. I think I should say to him that since uh, the government was formed, 3,145. Uh, new jobs have been announced by the state agencies and another 525 uh, in construction. The um, creation of employment and investment uh, in the economy uh, is, of course, uh, the government's uh, main uh, priority. And today uh, the government will be uh, announcing uh, a number of initiatives um, to uh, progress its uh, strategic investment strategy. Um, it will be announcing uh, significant reforms in the uh, semi-state sector, 
uh, to ensure that our semi-state sector uh, will be an engine for investment and for job creation. The government will be taking a total portfolio approach uh, to the uh, state companies. Uh, the setting up of a shareholder executive operation within the uh, NTMA uh, to be called New Era uh, is modelled on similar arrangements in other countries, including one established by the last uh, Labour government in the United Kingdom. And the objective is to get the best uh, out of our semi-state companies in order to uh, ensure that there is increased investment in our economy and job creation. In addition to that, uh, the Government will uh, also be announcing the establishment of the Strategic Investment Fund, which will, establish, uh, uh, which will um, channel resources from the National Pension Reserve Fund towards productive investment uh, in the Irish economy. All of this, uh, the establishment of the shareholder um, uh, executive of the New Era um, uh, entity within the NTMA, uh, which will be headed up by uh, a new chief executive, uh, uh, Dr Eileen Fitzpatrick, who is uh, a director of the uh, NTMA, uh, that will be aimed at maximising um, uh, the uh, contribution that the semi-state sector will make to the creation of jobs in the economy, and that mm -hmm. coupled with the Strategic Investment Fund uh, and added to the continuing efforts that are being made uh, by the state agencies uh, to uh, attract inward investment to this country, mm. which is evidenced, as I said, by the announcement already this year of over 3,000 uh, new jobs in that sector, I think demonstrates uh, that the government is absolutely serious about generating employment, about securing replacement employment where jobs are being lost, and in respect of Covidian, uh, the uh, state agencies will remain in close contact with that company uh, to discuss with them uh, what um, new investments they will be making uh, in that in that loan in order to minimise the amount of job Thank losses you. there. Thank you. De one minute, Deputy O'Keefe. Please, please, Deputy O'Keefe, one minute. Would the... <laughs> would the Sonics do not agree that it takes a number of years before an initial contact with new companies coming in and the announcement of jobs. In other words, all of the jobs being announced this year were actually be brought into place by Fiona File when we were in government. And that, and that, and that, and that, and that in this, and the great thing is, I, 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 I see Minister Bruton putting his head down because he knows the truth. He knows how long it takes before the announcements are made. And so, therefore, order. if you are claiming credit for the jobs this year, you are doing what you have been doing, what you have been doing in a that systematic way since questions. you Please. came into power, and that is that everything we have put in train that you think is good, you claim that you did it in medical time. The second thing uh, Question, I would like to ask you is that I was very interested in what you had to say about the semi-state companies, but I was wondering how you square the selling of the semi-state companies and the selling of minority shares where shareholder interest is going to uh, dominate with a big plan that you have directed by the state, directed by the state to develop the semi-state companies uh, on the jobs front and how you square that particular dilemma that I outlined here previously. I would also like to ask you, could you tell us how many jobs have been lost since you came into power this year? About 61. Order. I think you lost about 61, Please, Minister. You. <laughs> I'm tarnished it. Please. Right. I'm tarnished it. Oh. Order, please. Could this deputy identify himself? I'm tarnished it. Um, well, uh, I, I, I note um, how quickly Deputy O'Keeve has rushed to claim part of the credit for the uh, jobs that have been announced this year. I presume, I presume that he will also take appropriate credit for the huge numbers of people uh, who have lost their jobs uh, in the course of the, uh, of the recession. I do agree with him that uh, it does take time uh, for investment decisions to be, to be made. 
And that is why uh, the government has a programme uh, to uh, encourage inward investment uh, into this uh, country. That is why. That is why. Please, deputy. Deputy. That is why both Deputy Bruton. Uh, that is why. That is why Deputy Bruton was in the United States last week. That is why, in the course of my own work in New York last week, uh, worked with the IDA in talking to a number of, of companies. That is why. The restoration of Ireland's reputation, which was so badly damaged in the lifetime of the last government, has been so important to us. Uh, that is why I think that the, we, are seeing, we are seeing the fruits of the work of this government over the course of the last six months uh, in the restoration of this country's reputation. That is reflected in the very significant, very significant reduction in the interest rates, which is now applying to, uh, to Irish debt, all of which will encourage um, uh, increased investment uh, in this country. It is, also, it is also why, over the course of the next couple of weeks, uh, we have arranged a number of uh, events which are aimed at encouraging additional investment into this country. The convening of uh, a Global Irish Economic uh, Forum uh, on the 7th and 8th of October, which will bring together uh, senior uh, people from uh, the corporate world, many of whom have Irish connections. Uh, Deputy Bruton, uh, Minister Bruton, in, in, uh, in turn, has, a, has, has a, an additional event, which is co-organised co with, the, with the United States um, uh, Embassy, which is aimed particularly at uh, potential investors uh, from the United States. All of this, in addition to the measures that I have uh, already spoken about earlier, are aimed at encouraging investment in this country, the creation of jobs. The reality, Deputy O'Keefe, is that we have a very high level of unemployment. Everybody knows that. We have to try and get that level of unemployment down. The only way that we can do that is by the creation of employment. And the way in which we are doing that is, first of all, by encouraging additional inward investment into this country through restoring the country's reputation, and secondly, using the assets that we have available to us, including the semi-state uh, companies, which do, need, which, do need, which do need to be reorganised, which do need to be harnessed in a, different, in a different way than has been the case in the past, so that the combined strengths and the combined talents of the staff and uh, all of those involved in the semi-state companies and the NTMA can be brought together to increase investment, increase the number of jobs that are created, and get economic progress in this Thank country. Thank you, Tanisha. I'll call it. Sorry, no, sorry. Deputy Mary Lou McDonald. I'm sorry, Deputy. No, I'm sorry, no. Thank you. Deputy Mary Lou McDonald. No, sorry. Deputy Mary Lou McDonald. Please. You know about the standing order, Deputy. Standing order. No, no, please. Please. Order, please. Order. So, Tanish, we now have it straight. Um, your government is now intent on the wholesale privatisation of state assets and a commitment, or rather a threat, of two billion of privatisation has now morphed into a figure of a five billion fire sale of the state's family silver. Can I ask you, Tanishta, since when is the Labour Party in the business of lining the pockets of private investors at the expense of the taxpayer? You've clearly bent the knee to the Troika. That's nothing new. That's a pattern that's emerged. But in this instance, it's also very clear that you've bent the knee to Fine Gael. In fact, you stand in this house this morning and wax lyrical about new era, as though it were a creation of your own. Order. You know as well as I do, Tanishta. You know as well as I do, Tanishta, that the semi-states such as the ESB, Board Gosh, Airgrid, Board Namola, and Quilcha are all profitable industries. They have consistently self-financed. They have consistently returned a dividend to the Exchequer. They have consistently employed thousands of people, and they have been built up over generations of investment by Irish taxpayers. So tell me this, Tanishta. You talk about non-strategic assets. Can you tell me on what planet is the energy sector non-strategic? On what planet is the transport sector non-strategic? And can you tell me also, Tanishta, what of your promises 
made by your party to the electorate only a few short months ago that your party is opposed to short-term privatisation. You, Have you had a road to Damascus experience hand-in-hand hand with your boss, Enda Kenny? Cut, Margaret, uh, Tony, Order. Order. Tony, Deputy, um, order, please, please. Sorry, sorry, deputies. I've called the tarnisher, please. De On tarnisher, Deputy Macdonald should stop fantasising. There, there. <laughs> There is no, there is no fire sale of state assets, and there will be no fire sale of state assets. There is no wholesale privatisation of state assets. The government is taking a strategic approach to investment in the Irish economy, and we're doing that because I think even you will agree that there is a necessity and a priority to generate employment uh, in the Irish economy. We have a number of things going for us in this country. We have very good state companies, as you, as you have said. We have the NTMA, which has developed considerable expertise in the area of uh, finance and of, uh, of corporate governance. It makes sense to take what I call a whole portfolio approach to the state companies. That is the progressive approach that has been taken in a number of other countries where you get the state companies together, where the investment strategy in the, uh, in the state companies, uh, where the corporate governance uh, strategy, where the obtaining of, uh, of finance, uh, where the entire, if you like, state uh, shareholding uh, in the state companies is looked at uh, as, uh, as one. There are areas of the economy where uh, there is huge potential for, uh, for investment. Uh, in the area of communications, as you have said, uh, in the area of energy, uh, in the uh, area of infrastructure such as uh, water. All of these are areas where there is a requirement uh, for additional uh, investment, where there is potential for the, the generation uh, of uh, employment, and where it makes sense that the state harnesses the resources that it has available in order to invest in those areas of the economy and to generate employment directly in those areas of the economy itself and by investing in areas like energy and uh, communications by generating uh, additional uh, employment uh, outside of that. The government has a strategic approach to that. Uh, that strategic approach has uh, two arms to it. One is the uh, total portfolio approach that is being taken to the, to the state companies. The second is the establishment uh, of a strategic investment fund which will use resources from the National Pension Reserve Fund, leverage resources in the private sector in order to uh, invest uh, in the economy. Thank you, Tony. We yeah, thank thank you. you. Supplementary question. Thank you. Uh, you know as well as I do that the total portfolio approach can be taken and should be taken with those companies still in full public ownership. You know as well as I do that the moment that shareholder interests enter into the equation in the semi-states, that interest will trump the public one. You know that sure well. And that's the very reason, I imagine, why in your party's manifesto you stated categorically that you were against short-term privatisation. And yet that is precisely what you are proposing to do. To cash in the chips of the semi-states, you tell us to invest in jobs. The Troika have the view that that will be used to write down debt. And you are guilty of exactly the same short-term political thinking, as exemplified by the Fianna Fallers, precisely the same short-term thinking, and an incapacity to understand that those assets and those industries do need to be harnessed. They can generate employment, but the only way in which they will deliver 
their full value in the medium and long term to the state, to the citizens and to the taxpayers is by keeping them Thank in you, public Deputy. ownership. And I know, shall ask Ciarán Corla, you have singularly failed to tell us what are the non-strategic assets. Yeah. You haven't answered that because, of course, your plans are to go in and vandalise key strategic infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, right, that's deputy, sorry, deputy, and Deputy it. Rabbit. Sorry. Sorry, Deputy Rabbit. Sorry, sorry Deputy Mitchell. I'm sorry. Deputy De Rabbit and time. your cheerleaders here to my right. Okay. All right. Okay. May Scott. They know full well, yep. and we know full well that you have now buckled to the Troika and to Fine Gael. Yeah. Thank you, and Deputy. shame on the Labour Party for pursuing yeah. this. Deputy. We understood that your job in government was to stop De the worst excesses Deputy McDonald, of the privatisation please, Deputy, agenda. You're clearly not Deputy, serious about that. I have to that. ask you to conclude. I'm tarnished you, please. <laughs> please. Tarnished you. Final reply on this question. The um, Deputy MacDonald has referred to the Labour Party manifesto prior to the election. Yeah. The first word on the Deputy MacDonald, I think you'll agree, is jobs. That's what they that's what the Labour Party jobs 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 reform and fairness. And the jobs no, 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 no. Please, Deputy. Hold on. The, Order. The, the priority Sorry. Deputy. Look, Deputy. Deputy Doherty. Order, please. The priority. The priority. The priority. The priority of this government is to bring about economic recovery, get people back to work, and get people into jobs. To do that, Deputy Macdonald, we do have to reform the way in which things have been done in the past. You and your party keep, keep parroting on about change, yet you want to leave everything the same. You don't want to change anything. Please. You don't want to change anything. Right. Order. This government is in the business of doing change, yes. and doing change means that we will change the way in which our semi-state companies are being used within our economy. And we will change that, we will change that so that we can get maximum value from our semi-state sector in investing in our economy and getting people into employment. There are areas, 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 there are areas of our economy which require, which first of all require further investment, the energy area, the communications area, several other areas of our economy which require further investment and where there's potential for the generation of additional employment. Thank, thank you, Now, the government is going to take a very uh, constructive approach to using the state sector, the state companies, in order to invest in those areas of the, of the uh, economy, combine that with private sector investment to get people into employment. We're not going to be stuck in some kind of an old groove that you seem to want to remain in. We want to get, we want to get people, we want to get people into employment to create jobs and get economic activity moving again. Thank you, that's Thank the priority you. of this government, Thank you, and, and, and that's what we're going to do. I'll call on Deputy Shane Ross. Deputy Shane Ross. Yes. Thank you. Please order. Thank you, Kankola. Um, Tonsha, I'd like to first of all lighten your burden a bit this morning by bringing you some good news from Frankfurt. The, um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the tarnish to the order. Happy. The tarnish to the tarnish to will be aware of the fact that there is. Europe has woken up to the fact that bankers are not the only scoundrels in suits uh, in, this, in the financial crisis. The draft regulation has surfaced this week, pointing the finger very, very, very uh, decidedly at auditors. And what they say in this draft regulation is this, that there is no longer any trust 
between the clients of auditors, the public, and the government, because auditors have betrayed that trust, and particularly betrayed that trust in the case of financial reporting of financial institutions. It also points out specifically, and this is where Ireland comes in and it's so important, that the audit, auditing world is dominated by what they call an oligopoly. And by that they mean the big four, PricewaterhouseCooper, KPMG, Deloitte & Touche and Ernst & Young. And nowhere is that problem greater than it is in Ireland. And nowhere is it more a bigger problem than in the consultancy work, which is the target really of the problem, which is the kernel of the problem, which has been given to auditors who are also auditing the company in, 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 in question. In other words, they're doing consultancy work and they're doing the audit. And they question, have please, serious conflicts of interest. I have a question coming. The big four, the big four have been employed invariably by the Irish government to do consultancy work in the case of the banks. And at the same time, those big four, in lots of very high profile cases, have passed the banks and given the all clear for the solvency test. Now, what I want to know is this. How long is the government going to continue to accept the independence of these guys when they're patently compromised and continue to give them millions and millions in consultancy fees when they're auditing the accounts of the banks? Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Can I thank Deputy Ross for bringing me good news from Frankfurt? There's been a lot of good news from Frankfurt since this government took office. Not least the uh, very significant. Uh, there's been. There's been. Uh, there's been. Uh, not, not, uh, uh, including the very. In, including the very significant reductions in the uh, in the interest rate that we've been able to uh, able to uh, negotiate, and I thank uh, I thank uh, I thank uh, I, I thank uh, Deputy Ross uh, for uh, drawing my attention to it. I also agree with him uh, in respect of the performance uh, of uh, of auditors. Uh, it's I think there certainly are. Uh, very major questions to be asked about the performance of auditors, particularly in relation uh, to some of the financial uh, companies um, uh, and institutions uh, whose accounts were uh, were signed off by uh, by firms of auditors. Uh, particularly when we, uh, I think, have seen over uh, the in, over the last couple of years uh, some of the extraordinary transactions uh, which were taking place within banks. Uh, and financial institutions and between banks and financial uh, institutions. Uh, I also agree with him that um, uh, there is um, uh, an unhealthy concentration uh, of business uh, in uh, a small number uh, of uh, auditing and accounting uh, companies and that is some, certainly something I think uh, that, uh, that, has to be, uh, that, that has to be looked at. I think it's also fair to say that uh, the government, uh, present government, uh, is relying less and less uh, on uh, consultancy uh, work uh, being performed for it uh, by uh, the uh, by the uh, uh, by various uh, by various by various financial uh, financial companies, uh, and of course the uh, legislation which is being progressed by the government in respect of uh, whistleblowing. Uh, will, I think, also uh, contribute to a greater degree of uh, transparency uh, in the way in which these matters are dealt with. Marcus, Deputy Ross, one minute. Um, thank you, Tornstein. I'm getting quite used to um, you and the, and, and the Taoiseach replying to my questions and agreeing to the sentiments in, uh, in them and doing absolutely nothing about it. You should be worried. And what, I, what I'd ask you is this. The vast fees that have been paid to, say, PwC, which runs over 10 million, and KPMG, and, other, and Deloitte's, and indeed to Ernst & Young, who made an utter disgrace themselves in the Anglo-Irish case, are completely indefensible. And I ask you this, how long are you going to go on paying these fees when there are equally reputable, and I don't think any of them are reputable, but they're equally reputable or equally disreputable people in the second line of auditors who will do the job much, much more cheaply. Why do we, why do you, as a government, 
always and invariably go, sometimes without going through the tender process, why do you always invariably go to the, beef, to the big four who are not only discredited in Ireland, but are now discredited internationally and discredited in Europe, as you'll see from the draft regulation which is coming? Well, first of all, um, the European Union is working on a new directive uh, on the role of auditors, and a um, uh, consultation phase on that directive is underway at present, and that will establish uh, new uh, European-wide uh, regulations uh, governing the role of, uh, of auditors, and obviously that will apply here. So that's in respect of the, the general dimension of your, uh, of your, uh, of your question. In respect of uh, the uh, second uh, part of your question, which has to do with uh, the, the way in which the, the government um, engages firms of auditors or uh, it, uh, obtains uh, financial advice, I don't disagree with what you're, uh, with what you're saying. Uh, and I think you will find uh, that uh, as time uh, progresses, uh, that the government's approach towards the uh, securing of financial advice uh, will reflect more the sentiments that are expressed in your question than it will reflect the practices of the past. Um, no.